Welcome back to my channel everyone. I'm Charles from Charles in Photography. First of June, first day of winter, and let me tell you, it is pretty cool. Now we're racing the tide this morning. Tide was high at around three o'clock this morning, low around nine, just after six. When I got here about 15 minutes ago, start setting up, there was water all around me here, but as you can see by the video, the tide's going out quite quickly but we're going to make the most of it. Now this morning we're at Nudgee Beach and my goal is actually I want to do a couple of long exposures. I've got my filter set here, I've got a six stop hater filter, there's hardly any breeze. I just want to quickly try to get a couple of nice long exposures even if they're just to 30 seconds. We'll quickly put on all the filters that I want to use. First I'm going to put on my polarizer, then put on let's see the six stop hater nd filter so i not, normally don't carry this like this but this is the only way this morning so put the frame on now before i put the neutral density filter on i've got to get the polarizer right now there's two ways of using a polarizer sometimes you adjust it so you can actually see in the water this morning i've adjusted so i can actually get a fairly balanced exposure in the sky but the left hand side of my image here is quite bright so what i'm going to do is use a two-stop grad filter with my six-stop ND filter just to try to balance out that left-hand side. Now I've got my camera set up using my Nikon D500, the Takina 11 to 20 at 11 mils because I'm actually quite close to this mangrove. I just want to try to get as much of the water as possible. We're at F11, ISO 100. My white balance is I'll put it to sunny. I just want a bit of warmth in there. I'm using live view here and on the Nikon D500 and some of the other Nikons if you're in live view and you press the OK button you're actually getting a what you see is what you get. I'm actually going to bring it down there. Well I'm down to a quarter of a second. We just put on the timer delay just two seconds. Take a look at this image. This is JPEG. Foreground's a bit dark though but like I said I want my image longer. We can grab out the six stop now, a lot of these ND filters, they've got a bit of writing on them. The idea is that you put the writing at the top. So we'll slot in the ND filter. Now, I actually prefer to do it off camera. And what I do is I slot it in until I can just see they've got a little gauze on the around here. I don't want any light to come through. And this is especially the case if you're using like a 10 stop or something like that, because if there's light filtering through, it will affect your image. Now, like I also said, I need a grad filter. So this is a good two-stop ND grad. We'll put it on here. Now, I can't keep it straight. The light is coming from the side here, so I'm gonna rotate it around at about where I think the light is coming from. I think it's about right there. For something like about 60 degrees, we put a six-stop ND filter on. Now, there's heaps of apps that you can use. Our exposure was one quarter of a second. I'm in manual mode here, so I want to increase the light by six stops and your camera normally by default goes in thirds of a stop all i have to do is multiply six by three is 18 so we just count back 18 and showing me it's still a little bit dark 25 seconds looks smackaroos remember i'm using live view here so i'm actually getting a good gauge of my image but you've got to remember the light is getting bright very quickly so let's take a photo now when we're talking about long exposures especially in the morning light light is gaining up on us it's creeping up on us so if we use a 10 stop filter here we use the app and if the app told us that it was going to be a minute then you can't put a minute into your timer because the light is increasing and you'll find it to be overexposed check this out this looks beautiful oh we've got like fire in the sky here oh it's showing me that's slightly dark still so we're at 25 seconds we'll go to 30 seconds i don't want to reduce my f-stop so all i'm going to do is increase the iso to 125 from 100 this looks much better now i did see in my image and I'll show you in the next image here what to look for. And this is a problem when I'm shooting ultra wide at 11 mils with filters. I am so glad I got up this morning. It was like 10 degrees at my place this morning. My wife goes, are you crazy? You're gonna go outside at 10 degrees? I said, yep. This is the image that I just scored at 30 seconds, F11, ISO 125. This is the image before. It was just 25 seconds 
just five seconds more. Remember though, the light is getting a bit stronger. Now, please look into the right hand corner, up the top. Can you see there's just a little bar there? This is my filter set. It's on an angle, and also because I'm shooting 11 mils. Now, that doesn't worry me at all. I can slightly crop that out, or I can use Content Aware in Photoshop to get rid of it. So, that is no big deal for me. This light is just magic. We've got like, there's a cloud up there. It actually looks like a storm cloud. There's a cloud up there that's like circular, and the front clouds are just hanging down. And in the image, it's just, rip a -rooney. Now I'm just going to move the camera just slightly to the left here. I just want a little bit more of that cloud. Not too much. What you're seeing on the video here is about what I'm photographing. We'll quickly take another photo. Now it looks a little bit bright so I'm going to come back down to ISO 100. You didn't see me focus. I'd actually focused on the tree here. Once it's focused, this is a beauty with back button focusing. And if you don't know how to use back button focusing, I'll put a link up here about how to set up your Nikon camera for back button focusing. It means that your shutter button here is just used to take the photo, not to focus on your subject all the time. Well, that cloud is actually getting smaller. I'm also getting a little bit brighter. My RGB highlights here are telling me, right in the center here, it's blown out. What are my settings? 30 seconds, F11, ISO 100. And this is with the six stop, remember? All I can do is I'm going to go to F14. Sometimes when you come out here, you know, you've only got a couple of minutes of light. Now, because I was doing the video and all that, you know, I knew that I'd only get a couple of images, but that's really just what I want to share with you that sometimes you're, you're working against the clock, you know, you're under the pump, but you have to, at the same time, settle yourself down because if you rush yourself, you're not going to get a good photo. And believe me, I've been there. I've rushed myself, rushed my composition, and then you get home and you go like, if I'd only just taken, you know, like 30 seconds more, looked at my image better, I would have gotten a much better composition. And this is what I did today. Now, I've been here just recently, about a month ago, so I can remember where the trees were and I had a vague idea of what I wanted. But if this was your first time here, then you have to give yourself a little bit of time saying, okay, I'm going to want this and Give yourself at least 10 minutes to walk around, even if it's a bit dark, of walking around saying, okay, well, this is the sort of composition I want. Set yourself up so when it starts getting light, you're there. You're ready for that magic shot. Now, that looks nice. I've again got just a little bit of blown highlights right in the center of the image, but I'm going to accept that. That just looks really nice. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the polarizer. I want to see if I can just brighten the foreground a little bit. Now I'll take this image and I'll show you something once we've taken this image. I haven't adjusted any of the settings and I want to show you this is why sometimes you've got to be careful how you set your polarizer up. We're still at 30 seconds. The image that you see here is the image before I adjusted the polarizer. The sky is very even. The bottom of the image, it's actually quite dark. Now, take a look at this one. The top right corner of the sky is a bit darker, but look at the bottom left. Can you see now we've, all, we've got that cloud reflection in there? So I'll go back. So this is a previous image. Now this is this image, and look at it. Can you see why I state that a polarizer should be your number one filter to buy when you shoot landscapes. You can do it without ND filters, grad filters and all that, but you can't put a polarizer in post-processing. It's just not the same. And look at this. We've now got beautiful reflections of that cloud. But at the start, I couldn't do this. I really want to balance the sky because there was too much different light. Now that we've got a bit more light, the sky's a bit more even, now I can actually twist that polarizer to get that light in there. And look at that, we can actually see the branch and the tree reflecting. It is just magical. Wow, this is just so good. Now, do I need to keep taking photos? Not really. 
I've got what I want. Light is changing quickly. We've actually lost that magic light. Only been here, what, 15 minutes? And the light is changing. I could go home now and saying, well done, my plan for this morning has worked out. Why? Because I put some planning into my photography. And this is the number one thing. If you're starting out in photography, when you go out, I know it's hard to just say, well, I'm just going to go to the beach and take some photos. Make a plan. You're going to the beach. Look for the tides. Where are you going? Is it best at high tide? Is it best at low tide? Some places are better photographed at high tide. Other places are better photographed at low tide. Some places, like this area here, they're better photographed at mid tide so that you've still got some water around, water puddles, that you can get the reflections of the trees. So look at the tides. Look at what time sunrise. If you want to take sunrise, look what time sunrise. They say sunrise this morning, 6.30. So we're just after 6.30 and it's just going to creep over the horizon now. So you're saying, okay, sunrise is 6.30. Don't plan to be here at 6.30. Plan to be here at least half an hour, maybe even 45 minutes before sunrise. I know it means getting up earlier, but what they say, the early bird gets the worm. You want to be set up before that magic light because sometimes by the time the sun comes up, the magic light's gone. Sometimes we get magic light at daybreak. This morning, the magic light was 10 minutes before sunrise. So if I would have planned just to get here at sunrise, I would have missed those magic shots that we got around 10, 12 minutes ago. So if you found value in this video tutorial, give me a thumbs up. I'd appreciate if you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Stay safe, enjoy your photography, and I'll see you next time.